Welcome back to Limitless Recap. Today I will show you action thriller film from 2020. Spoilers ahead, watch and take care. For seven years, Jake Green, Jason Statham, has been held in solitary confinement. On either side of him, in isolated cells, are two unknown figures, one a con man, the other a chess master. While in seclusion, Jake and the other two communicate via handwritten notes tucked inside of shared temporary books on chess and the ideal scam. Jake learns the components of a successful con, but it is not until much later that he truly appreciates its complexity and importance to him. Jake tells the other two a lot about himself during these conversations. These two men have never met Jake in person. The two inmates decide to free Jake as part of their jail escape strategy. The two flee the following day, leaving Jake behind. He feels defrauded. All the money Jake had stashed on the outside is stolen while Jake is still incarcerated by the two free criminals. When it came to the formula, they had faith in Jake, and he had faith in them to look after his sizable amount of cash. Instead of taking the cash, they leave a card with the following message. You can only become smarter by playing a smarter opponent, according to the first rule of any game. Take place two years later. After Jake gets out of prison, bankrupt and impoverished, he starts to apply what he understands of the formula and of the deception he learned from his time in solitary. He appears to have learned a vital lesson from the two con artists inside since it is quite successful and he does well in the gambling industry. When Jake's finances are back on track, he confronts his adversary, the ambitious Dorothy Maka, Ray Liata. When Jake and his brothers enter Maka's casino, they are immediately called before Maka to participate in a game of chance. They must ride an elevator up 22 levels to get to Macha's game. And it is revealed that Jake has severe claustrophobia as a result of spending so many years in solitary. He must fight off an anxiety episode in order to ride the elevator. Jake humiliates Makta by defeating him in a game of chance at the game. Makta wants vengeance and has Jake assassinated because she fears more of the same. Jake and his brothers are leaving the casino when a strange man, Zatch, approaches them and offers to help. He also gives Jake a letter that says to take the elevator. Jake decides to take the stairs since he can't bear the return trip, but he unexpectedly passes out, falls down the steps, and needs to be taken to the hospital. He is quite ill, according to the physicians, who do not, however, say why he had the blackout. Macha gives the go-ahead for a hit on Jake and asks assassin sorter, Mark Strong, to handle things. Without Billy, Jake arrives home to one of Macha's hits as a welcome. Only Jake makes it out alive after being saved by the enigmatic Satch. Because Sorter is perplexed by Jake's escape and survival and is unaccustomed to his hits failing, the otherwise emotionless murderer begins a silent, intense process of self-questioning. Jake is taken by Zatch to his equally enigmatic partner Avi, who shows him the results of his medical tests and tells him he has three days to live due to an internal ailment. He claims that he and his companion can protect Jake from Maka and Jake's physical ailment. Maka is simultaneously attempting to do business with Sam Gold, who is infamous but ostensibly invisible. He strikes a deal with Lily Walker, his female representative, who represents the queen on the chessboard. Makja is cautioned that Sam Gold will be extremely upset if he doesn't follow through on the agreement. Makja sees no issue because he is just interested in the benefits of doing business with Gold, who stands in for the opposition. The trade is for some white powder, which stands for vice in all its forms, or, to put it another way, deceptive strategies for beating the game or escaping Gold's fury that, paradoxically, only serve to draw you closer to him. Since Jake only has three days to live, he agrees to do whatever the two enigmatic figures tell him to do. There is no time for negotiation, so Jake is ready to follow their instructions. To Jake's dismay, Avi, Andrew Benjamin, and Zatch, Vincent Pastor, pretend to be loan sharks and progressively pressure him to give up all the money he gained through the con. The fact that Avi and Zatch are making him perform things he despises seems to be murdering a part of him. As a result of being dragged into elevators repeatedly, Jake experiences a physical and mental ordeal. Also, they disrupt Makta's agreement with Gold, placing Makta and Gold in danger and forcing Makta to obtain the powder from Lord John, a rival crime boss, Tom Wu. They disrupt the agreement with Lord John to make it seem like each gang committed the treason, which makes the situation worse. Due to their stupidity and avarice, these two gangs start to annihilate one another. The turning point in Jake's adventure occurs when his new employers, Avi and Zach, 
order him to kill a man who owes them money. In defiance of the voice in his head, Jake refuses. At this crucial moment, Jake snaps and demands the two enigmatic figures to explain their strategy. Is he prepared to hear the reply? What purpose does it serve to subject him to such suffering? The spectator is informed at the beginning of the movie that Jake learned this special formula in prison, and Avi and Zach do nothing more than repeat it. Any game's first cardinal rule is that you can only become smarter by playing smarter competition. Now, Jake understands that he was duped by the perfect scam, that he is merely a pawn in the game, and that his opponent, Sam Gold, is located inside Jake's skull, the last place he would ever look. Another component of the perfect con formula. Sam Gold is a metaphor that has taken the form of the devil, fear, ego, and evil. With this previously elusive knowledge in hand, Jake now engages in conflict with himself. He understands that the purpose of the game A.V. and Zack forced him to play was to weaken the Sam Gold he already was, as a result, he felt as though a part of him was dying. This game appears to be played backwards. In order to give Dorothy Machta credit, Jake donates the last of his money to a charity. At this moment, we realize that the voice we hear in the movie as a voiceover is actually the Sam Gold, who lives within each character's head, not the voiceover we hear in the movie. The voice in Macha's brain that tells him to claim the credit is making him fatter. Now that Jake is aware of the game he is playing, he goes to Macha and begs for forgiveness at the foot of his bed. The voice inside Jake's head, which is currently in excruciating pain, disagrees with this utterly. Jake leaves Macha's bedroom in a blocked elevator, his worst nightmare because he has claustrophobia. But this is where the actual combat takes place. Sam Gold hides behind the agony that Jake causes. Sam Gold employs all available means to subdue and weaken Jake, but he is now detachable enough from the voice for Jake to fall for it. By saying, embrace the suffering and you will win this game, Jake entirely leaves his Sam Gold persona. The elevator then immediately begins to run. Despite being freed from the physical jail he had been living in for seven years, he comes to the realization that he was still imprisoned in his own head. He is deeply liberated after confronting and overcoming his anxiety. A puzzled and irate Maka holding a gun is standing there when the elevator doors open. Jake no longer cares about Maka, and he is unable to comprehend the game he is playing. Jacob walks straight by Macha, gun or no gun. Macha sobs because Jake is no longer afraid of him. His ego is unable to bear this, and he succumbs to the voice of his own Sam Gold that he hears in his head. Macha suffers from the awareness that Sam Gold is going to come and grab him despite not knowing who Sam Gold actually is or where he lives. He is unaware that Sam Gold is already capturing him from within. In Macha's honor, Jake makes a sizable donation to a charity, further subduing his inner Sam Gold while enhancing the Sam Gold inside, who gleefully accepts the praise and attention from the public. Following this gesture, Maka is initially kind to Jake. However, after finding that Jake had planned the sabotage on the powder deals, Maka orders Jake's death with increased vigor. Jake's brother and niece are discovered at his home by Macha's men. The previously unresponsive sorter completes his internal reflection and intervenes as Maka's goons are torturing Jake's brother and endangering his young daughter. However, the previously unresponsive sorter is ultimately outgunned by the final survivor of the gang, who takes Jake's niece back to Makta. Jake and Avi complete a game of chess in Makta's casino after Jake realizes that the enigmatic personalities Avi and Zach are not who he initially believed them to be. It is now clear that Avi had the ability to defeat him at any point. Avi explains to him one of the rules once more. The trick is to feed the victim pieces so they believe they took them because they are smarter than you are. Jake is aware that these two people are his former roommates from solitary confinement, with whom he shared a cell for seven years. They made good on their promise to free him from jail and they did, but Jake was unaware that the prison was the one inside his mind, and he had no idea how big that prison was. Avi and Zach openly admit that they didn't aid him because they liked him, rather, they did so because they are him. They are reflections of his higher nature. Jake's persona of Sam Gold, meanwhile, developed from his actions after being released from prison, where he deceived his adversaries into believing he was making them wealthy when, in reality, he was stealing their money. This is similar to how the ego develops by promoting excess and a sense of entitlement in those who it resides in. Jake confronts Maka about his niece being held hostage. The Sam Gold inside of Maka is shouting with wrath, pride, and terror 
while Magja himself is overcome with uncertainty and panic. Jake continues to be fearless of Macha, which continues to frighten him. The Sam Gold inside of Macha, his ego, whispers, you can't kill someone who's already dead. Maka is afraid Sam Gold is going to kill him for messing up the delivery of the powder, which has cost him his life. Finally, Maka chooses suicide over killing Jake or his niece out of pride and fear. Sam Gold triumphs. In the end, the narrative is about learning that the mind is the jail and that the ego is the unseen ruler of that setting. Fear is the only internal opponent that has ever truly existed. The way one feels about the outside environment greatly influences it. The enemy in life is fear, and he becomes more intelligent as you do. You can master it once you identify it for what it is, but until you do, you are just an unwitting slave and the game hasn't completed its round.